William Howard Taft. So when Teddy Roosevelt decides not to run for the presidency again at that moment, he is going to handpick his successor, William Howard Taft. Now, Teddy Roosevelt really thought that Taft would be a successful president that would continue on with a lot of the policies he had already implemented and basically be able to hold the Republican Party together. Teddy Roosevelt was wrong. The thing is, by 1908, Taft is going to basically have led the Republican Party to disaster. But what did Taft do before that? The thing is, Taft really did a lot of what Teddy Roosevelt had already done, just more. So it's things like the ICC, the Interstate Commerce Commission. He's going to extend its jurisdiction to telephone and telegraph companies. So it's not just over railroads anymore. Um, he's going to set aside even more land for like forests um, and lands for like oil reserves and such in the future. So even more conservation. Um, he's also going to is going to support a constitutional amendment that would authorize the first income tax under the 16th amendment in 1913. Now he's not going to actually implement this, but he supports it so it goes through Congress. The idea being that if the government's going to have a much more larger regulatory role, then they're going to have to hire a lot of more people into those positions and everything. And some something basically needs to pay for all of that. And so an income tax would do that. Um, so we're just seeing a way for the government to expand its activities and responsibilities. Uh, we're also going to see that Teddy, that I'm sorry, Taft had an even more successful and active antitrust program than Teddy Roosevelt even did. But then we get to the issues. So there were two really big issues at this time period with the Republican Party. The first of all, first issue was the Republicans themselves were divided. There was the reform Republicans, the more progressive Republicans basically, and the conservative, old guard, conservative Republicans. The second issue is just Taft was, an, was politically inept. He really was unable to mediate between these two sides and this is what's going to cause the party to split eventually. The thing is, several different times while Taft was president, progressives in the Republican Party expected Taft to support them on some issues, and he just didn't. Uh, these issues would have been things like lowering tariffs, um, restricting the power of the Speaker of the House, which actually the progressive Republicans managed to do anyway later without Taft's help. But the point is they see Taft basically as siding with the conservative element within the Republican Party and being against any kind of real change. And then this brings us to the controversy over conservation. So Gifford Pitchett, told you he was coming back. Um, this is going to be Gifford Pitchett versus Richard Ballinger, who was Taft's Secretary of the Interior. The thing is, Ballinger clearly favored private development of public lands rather than government involvement in conservation. Pitchett is going to basically question Ballinger's role in a questionable sale of public coal lands in Alaska to a J.P. Morgan syndicate. So when all of this comes to a head, Taft sided with Ballinger and actually fired Pitcher. This really was the straw that broke the camel's back. Basically at this point, progressives within the Republican Party were determined to replace Taft. They would start to champion their own person to take over the Republican Party, Lafayette, um, who actually there is a source that you'll get to read from his perspective later. Now, Teddy Roosevelt himself didn't say anything too publicly against Taft. The thing is, most likely Teddy Roosevelt probably sided with Taft in this instance, but basically Roosevelt was annoyed that Taft had all of these political blunders. And so Roosevelt puts himself out for the Republican nomination. But the amazing thing is, 
Taft manages to hold on to the Republican nomination. Now, despite this, Teddy Roosevelt's going to go on to form a third party, the Progressive Party, and he's going to be nominated there. Um, but what this really means is a lot of Republicans were split. Should they vote for Taft? Should they vote for Roosevelt? And in the end, this basically means victory for the Democratic Party and their candidate, Woodrow Wilson. So, thinking about leading up to this election, who do you think should have been the Republican Party's candidate? Should it have been one of those three, or should it have been someone else entirely? Who do you think, and explain your reasoning.